the tropical moisture flowing up from the Gulf of Mexico, transporting clouds, higher precipitable waters, higher dew points, and an increase in the chances of precip. Let's take a look at the surface chart and there it is. We can see down there in Texas, dew points are coming up into the 50s and we're starting to see the appearance of some 60s right around Victoria. Also, the dry line is beginning to take hold in West Texas. So we're shifting into a springtime pattern and you can see the dew points out west of that dry line in the 20s. And the characteristic southwest wind there at Guadalupe Pass and Tucumcari. Lurking to the west, we can see a cold front there in New Mexico with cloudy skies, cooler temperatures, and a westerly component to the wind flow. Let's dive right into the heights and vorticity chart because now that we're getting into springtime, the upper air patterns are going to be especially relevant in these convective driven processes. Now, what we see here is the jet stream. Looks like maybe two lobes, one up here and one down in Texas. Cyclonic flow in the western U.S. and anticyclonic flow east of the Rockies. And buried within that flow, some waves beginning to emerge from the southwestern U.S. And that's bringing an increase in mid and high clouds to the south central U.S. And even more importantly, this is showing an increase in baroclinicity. The stronger upper level winds, the stronger height gradient located far out to the southwest in the Los Angeles, San Diego area. And that's pretty important as far as this chart goes, because that tells us that the strongest energy is still way out to the west. Now we do see a couple of closed systems in the plains. There's one right there in Colorado, another up in North Dakota, but nothing further out to the southwest. Now, if we refer back to the classic stages of development of a frontal system, we go from this open wave to a closed mature system and then to an occlusion. So depending on what part of the front you're on, you're in maybe either that one or this one. Now, these open waves, they tend to be also called stable waves. However, when they pick up upper level energy, they undergo development and progress into the more mature phases. Now, because of that, we have to watch the tail end of this cold front for further development. And looking at the forecast sequence, this is how the chart looks for this evening. Cold front is going to be located right down there into southern Arizona and then the other portions further up to the north kind of like that. So we're watching this area and we've got the stronger bear clinicity out towards the southwest. Now when we run this forward into tomorrow, there's tomorrow morning. The front has not made much headway. It's still right there around El Paso, Alamogordo, Roswell, down into northwestern Mexico. But it is getting stormy out there in California. So let's keep an eye on that region there, New Mexico, Arizona. That frontal boundary is still there as we get into tomorrow night. And finally, we start to see some development of a cyclone, probably induced partially by lee side troughing there east of Albuquerque. And you can see that takes off up to the northeast Wednesday night. Now the old tail end is still there, so there's still potential for another wave to develop. So we run that forward into early Thursday, and that original wave has already moved up towards Missouri. But we've still got that old tail end sitting way back there and plenty of energy across Arizona. So what happens next? Looks like another wave starting to take hold around Albuquerque. There it is right there. And we can connect that back up to the original systems. And this is the area that we're watching for Thursday evening. Now that kind of cyclogenesis out to the west, that can be very important for moderating the inflow of moisture from the Gulf 
and that kind of shapes the oscillation of the dry line from day to day. Now with this, we would expect a lot of moisture to surge to the west, with dew points coming up in places like Fort Stockton and Midland. And yeah, still plenty of energy way out to the west. Now if we had more moisture involved, this would probably be a multi-day severe weather event. So let's go forward into Thursday into Friday. Looks like that system starts to develop there around Roswell. Warm front down into, I don't have that drawn very well, but there it is, around Lubbock and then back up towards this inverted trough. So it looks like for overnight, Thursday night, this would be the most likely area of any lift, any forced convection. And then going into Friday, I think we've probably seen that original wave kind of move with the upper level flow and maybe another low starting to develop out there in West Texas. So there's really a lot of detail going on. See, there it is right there. Looks like we've picked up that wave late on Friday into Saturday. And this one gets a little bit more developed. You can see that becomes a occlusion. And we're still not done with that tail end. Looks like there's another wave way down there. So it's getting more and more active as that trough emerges from the southern Rockies. So a lot going on there. And as we get into Saturday, maybe Saturday night into Sunday, looks stormy. Development of a mesoscale convective system out in North Texas, Oklahoma, the Hill Country, and Kansas. And that'll probably propagate eastward overnight into Sunday. So I'm not sure if we still have a wave left on that tail end, but it is starting to move out into Texas proper. So there we go. System finally moves eastward Sunday, and then all the way out into the eastern U.S. by Monday. At this point, you can see we're left with this occlusion back there, the main thermal gradient well to the south. So the main Bear Clinic zone is located probably out here around Atlanta, and then everything up north of there is an occlusion. And we're not done with those troughs. There's another one out there in California for the start of next week. So we're probably going to be in this stormy pattern for at least the next 10 days. Yep, look at that. Storms for the 16th, about a week from now. So what are we looking at for the rest of the week? Let's check out the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. And you can see things getting a little bit more intense there in the southwestern U.S. Closed to low over California by Thursday. The flow continues to strengthen over Arizona. We can easily drop a scoot on that part of the country and get a look at those upper level conditions. Looks like lots of 130 knot winds up at jet stream altitude. And then moving forward into the weekend, that cutoff low continues to drift eastward. The main prevailing westerlies way up to the north, so this is definitely cut off. And we've got the southern branch down in Mexico and in Texas. So chances of storms will be going up going into the weekend. Then finally, the dynamics emerge on Saturday. Now, you might be thinking of a lot of severe weather on Saturday, but with all these dynamics coming out, the very intense cooling, everything is going to be strongly forced, and that means a lot of linear-type convective modes. Then the cutoff low heads up into the central U.S. By this time, we're having a lot of drier air moving through Texas into Arkansas, Louisiana, so probably the cold front We'll catch up with a dry line, and this will just be a fast-moving frontal system at the surface. And then here comes bowling ball number two through California about six days from now, and that'll move aggressively eastward. So another chance of weather or thunderstorms, showers, something like that in about a week. Anything else on the tail of that one? 
Yeah, this is going to be an open wave. That's a medium wave trough. I'm not sure if we're going to have the moisture recovered by then. Another trough out there in the western U.S. Man, if this was May, we'd be looking at a lot of chaseable weather. Okay, so that's the wrap-up of the upper-level conditions. And I think a good thing to look at at this point would be the precipitable water. Because this tells you pretty much how much moisture as a whole is making it northward. Well, it looks like plenty moving north over the next three or four days. Precipitable water is coming up to about an inch and a half in Oklahoma, northwest Texas, and a few two-inch amounts there in northern Oklahoma. So once this wave moves out, we're going to have probably some widespread convective weather in Texas and Oklahoma. And you can see that front pushing everything to the east, kicking everybody out of the house. And then on the south side around Tuesday, we start seeing some moisture advection working back up north. But let's see, with that fast moving system, it's going to be tough getting enough of it up there. Let's see what the soundings look like. Well, this is dominated by vertical motion, so we're going to back that up a little bit. Yeah, we'll check this out right there. And, yeah, there's some decent depth to that moisture, but we're starting out with mid-50s dew points there and weakening with height. So plenty of depth, but just not much richness to that moisture supply. So that'll be a factor early next week. You can see the drying setting in once again. And looks like just not enough return moisture for the next wave coming through. And then it looks like we get bulldozed by some cold air. However, you know, that will give us plenty to look at over the next few weeks. And that'll do it for our Tuesday edition. I want to thank our Patreon supporters, Barry Seifert, Richard Swikart, James Flanagan, and Austin Haig. I appreciate the new signups and the pledge renewal. The pledge increase, actually. So that'll help invest in this program and keep it going for a while into the future. And we'll see you back for the Wednesday edition. Have a great one. Bye-bye.